We are looking into valley number three now. By far the uh, largest valley. You can see all the cottonwood trees going straight back up the valley. And off to the south, in the distance, you can see the Wolf Mountains. Here you have Ridge B on the left, valley number three, right in the middle. And if you look off to the right or to the west, you can see the dreaded Ridge C. It's also called the third line of bluffs. And in front here, you have the cottonwood trees moving left to right, and that is Reno Creek. And Custer and Reno are moving left to right across the screen here. And you have Benteen up back here on Ridge B, about four miles back, and he's about to enter valley number three. So what Benteen does is he comes off of Ridge B, and he moves down into valley number three here. And at this point, Benteen makes a decision. He's going to try to save his horses. He doesn't want to have to go up to that ridge, the third line of bluffs, if he doesn't have to. So he decides to keep the battalion in valley number three and save the horses, or rest the horses. And he is only going to send the advance detail under Gibson up to Ridge C. And he is just bagging that Ridge C will be the last high ground that the advance detail, what's up on that ridge, will be able to look to the west and finally see into the Little Bighorn Valley. If not, Benteen is going to have to look, go over Ridge C and that is just going to hurt the horses and slow them down even more. So Benteen sends the advance detail off and Gibson and the detail arrive up there at about 1.17 p.m. And they start looking toward the west and voila, they see the little Bighorn Valley finally. You can't see it from here because the ridge is in the way. But uh, Gibson is up there on the ridge and he has the field glasses and he's looking into the little Bighorn Valley but he doesn't see any Indian village and he doesn't see any smoke and he doesn't see any villages in the southern part of the valley and he doesn't see any activity whatsoever so it sure doesn't look like the Indians have been alerted because they haven't scattered uh, there's no activity whatsoever at this point it seems pretty peaceful so Gibson and the advanced detail leave Ridge C and come back down into valley number three where they give Benteen the details at about 1.30 p.m. and Benteen is confident that the scout is complete uh, the Little Bighorn Valley is clear, there's no signs of activity, and Benteen has looked to his right down every valley during the scout, and uh, knows Custer's flank is clear. Uh, there are no Indians or villages in any of those valleys to the left. And uh, Gibson up on Ridge C had also looked down the South Fork Valley, which is in front of Benteen, and uh, there was no village or Indians in that valley either. So Benteen is confident that the scout is over, and he decides to move down valley number three toward Reno Creek, uh, which is right in front of us here. The trees going left to right. And basically, he will catch back up with Reno and Custer. Now, unfortunately, Benteen is still a little annoyed about having to go over some of these ridges during the scout. Even though the scout did have purpose, Benteen was angry. Felt like he might have been micromanaged a little bit during the scout. And this is where the captain really begins to mess up. He slowly moves down valley number three. He's only about four and a half miles back there, but he slowly moves on flat, open terrain. And that's disobeying direct orders, because one of Custer's orders was that once the scout that was over, to quickly rejoin the command. Now, Benteen is clearly not doing this. Even though that while the advance detail was up on Ridge C, Benteen and the rest of the horses in the battalion were sitting in the valley. So it's not like the horses are tired to the point of exhaustion. But Ventine continues to move slowly down valley number three, and this is increasing the distance between Custer and Reno's battalions and Ventine's battalion. Now Ventine also does not send a courier or a messenger to Custer. And uh, so once again, this is disobeying direct orders. Obviously Custer had sent Ventine on a scout to obtain information, and Ventine has all this information, but he has to forward the information to the commanding officer, which is Custer. But Benteen is not doing that, and Custer is not a mind reader. So we have some serious dereliction of duty on Captain Benteen's part at this point. Going slow, and not sending the information forward to Custer, so he knows what the situation is. At this point, Benteen continues to move down valley number three at a very slow pace, and he finally gets to the junction of the Valley Number 3 stream here in front of us and Reno Creek, the confluence here. 
Benteen gets here at about 2.16 p.m., which means he is moving at a little over 4 miles per hour, which is pretty bad. Now, Reno and Custer had passed this point at about 45 minutes to an hour prior to this, so you can tell that the commands are starting to get separated. They are starting to get out distance due to Benteen's slow movement. It takes Benteen about 10 minutes to get everybody across Reno Creek here. It's kind of steep down there and boggy. And he comes up here close to the road and then makes the left turn and begins to move off to the west down Reno Creek toward the next objective, which is we need to water the horses. So as he is moving, he is moving west toward the next stop, which is the morass. Well, while Benteen is moving along the trees here, a rider from way back here comes into view and actually comes up through Benteen's line as the battalion moves off to the west and then passes Benteen. Now the rider is Boston Custer, the 27-year-old civilian and youngest brother. Now Boston has been riding with headquarters, but his horse tires out, so he backtracks down Reno Creek and rejoins the uh, pack train which is in the rear. He uh, exchanges horses, gets a fresh mount, and then leaves on his own to uh, link back up with his brothers and his nephew and the Custer Battalion. So Boston actually passes Benteen in this area. Benteen continues to move slow, so Boston just goes right by him. Now, Benteen is moving so slow that the pack train, which Boston had just left, is only about a mile down the road here. So Benteen is moving so slow that the pack train is catching up, and the pack train is moving at glacial pace. So this is just another example, just showing how slow Benteen is moving now. And we are in combat conditions, so you should be moving pretty quickly, sending information to Custer, you shouldn't be getting passed by the civilian, Boston Custer, on the back trail, and you shouldn't allow the pack train, which is slow-moving mules, to catch your battalion of horses. Benteen is allowing all this to happen. It's very bad. So, it's a little bit after 2.16 p.m., and we're going to move further down and get to the next stop.